what a journey through his life. And you, you said it at the beginning, I think, you know, we, the experience especially of hearing it live, you feel all the light and the emotion through the music. And I think that's one of the many, many things that's so brilliant about this film uh, from a classical musician's perspective, is that the music we play is just a reflection of the life we live. And even as a performer, you know, what we put into it is just the things we live. And I feel that sometimes people forget about that. They think that these are separate. It's not separate. It's, and certainly for Lenny it wasn't. And you, your choices of music just captured this completely. Well, we thought uh, maybe we could just give you a little history about the genesis of this uh, experiment that you saw tonight. Uh, that lives in the film, too. Uh, I met Yannick uh, during a, a, a rehearsal of Otello that we met, that Gustavo was doing. We met for the first time, and I started talking. I'm from Philadelphia, and one of the many things the music director of the Philadelphia Orchestra. Uh, yes. Yeah. Great, 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 great. And, uh, and so we started talking about this idea of making a movie. Uh, one musical element where the dialogue itself would be musical along with the live music. And Yanni suggested right away, well, we're doing Candide in two weeks. Why don't you and Carrie come and narrate it? What better way? And then that was the sort of first jumping off the cliff moment. And there were many more where I was terrified and Carrie, do you remember? And then in that, actually, when we were watching rehearsal, right before they had stopped to uh, make our garden grow, Yanni wanted to do it one more time. And I remember when we watched it, I recorded it on my phone, uh, which wound up being the shot, the reveal of Felicia during Mahler too. It's interesting how these little things find their way into the movie. Um, and it was the most incredible recording on my phone that I sent to so many friends, and you just could not cry. And then that's why we did the rehearsal of the film. But Carrie, do you remember that moment? Yeah, I do. Well, I remember being in your house in LA when you asked me, you said, please, we should go to Philadelphia and we should narrate Candide. And this would offend maybe some people in the room, but I was like, how do you narrate an opera? I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but I wanted to show you what I mean, because I wanted a job. So, <laughs> so I was like, absolutely, I will. You're a great actor. And I actually called my mom, I was like, Mom, do you, can you narrate opera? Um, but we did, we went to it, and it was unbelievable. And I so vividly remember standing on the stage and we sang Make Our God Grow and Feeling. And then every night we was, before we came on to do the show, we would be in the wings, just like the overture. The overture. Yeah. Yeah. And in that moment, I, that was the beginning, I think, with you and I talking about sort of creative choices. And uh, even within Candide, we were having conversations because we were there for all the rehearsals. Yeah. And, yeah, I remember, I remember that was the. The idea was to witness all of how, you know, the parts of making a show, well, starting from staging rehearsals and then an orchestra alone and chorus rehearsal. And this is, um, I think Make Our Garden Grow was already very much on your mind for the film, you know, because this is so essential to the relationship of the two. But I, that's true, at one point in the script early on, Josh, are you here? Josh here? No. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Josh. Um, at the end of the script for, for like two years was make our garden. That's right. It used to end, the movie used to end on that. But I, uh, speaking of that video, I remember, because you also, at some point in the script, Candide was not a rehearsal. No. So it was, then it became a concert, a performance. But then, because of that experience also, you did say, say, I want to get back to this feeling. And you yes. sent me that video with Carrie looking, uh, watching the rehearsal, and that's why it became, as you mentioned, the course rehearsal. And I think that's also very important, because it makes it more intimate uh, in the film. But again, the point of view of the classical musicians, I mean, there are many here tonight, I assume, but it's, uh, yay, classical musicians! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, musicians, anyway, what's the last one? Anyway, we're all musicians. Um, I think it's great to show that there is this kitchen also, and that things get done with a lot of intensity. It's not because it's a rehearsal, but it's without emotion, right? It can be really intense, and I think that served 
the story in that case very much. The other thing, uh, goal of this film um, is for to present the power of this music to people who maybe aren't so accustomed to listening. And that was something that Yannick was so key about. I was already in love with classical music, but what was valuable during the process of uh, preparation was Yannick, who's also from that opera here, uh, music director, and uh, yes. <laughs> He allowed me to see the hit of um, his operas that he could conduct, which was incredible. And then the rehearsal in Philadelphia, you would put me in between the violins and the viola right in the middle. And anybody who ever gets a chance to be on the, you know, on the field, as it were, uh, just the, the absolute power of the music. And the one thing that, that I hope this movie can somehow portray is the absolute miracle of, of this type of collective, um, musical experience that I've never, and I love music, and clearly I made a movie with rock music and the, that I love, but there's just, for, for me, nothing comparable to coming into a hall like this and watching all of these musicians play together. Isn't it just the most incredible <laughs> thing? Before, I mean, we talked about this, but I, I don't think I ever asked you the question so directly. How much did, before directing this particular film, you thought of conducting and directing as being very similar? Oh, I never thought about that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, but um, yeah, that's interesting. Because I don't think, like many people, many of my friends are like, what the heck is conducting? You know, and you're like, well, I don't disagree. Like, yeah, what the heck is <laughs> Everything. I mean, it's everything. Uh, it's it's quite impossible. Uh, so I was I was also ignorant of that fact, and it wasn't until studying with you and immersing myself that I realized just how incredible and how similar it really is. You're right. To, it's almost exactly the same. Because I observed from my vantage point when whenever I was on set, I I really observed you doing this very much like a conductor and very musically also respectful of everyone, but when it was time to be in the shot, in the ocean, everyone had to participate into this, which is very much what we do with the orchestra. You know, tonight, for just one example, after this huge Mahler scene, uh, after the applause for Lenny, Bradley, not Lenny, yes, Lenny, yes, Bradley, anyway, <laughs> like this at the beginning, well, for you, um, then there's two clarinets, you know, and this moment is so magical from the, uh, the age of anxiety. But the whole orchestra, they don't play, but they're there, they're participating. And I think this power of the collective, like you said, but also not necessarily because they all have something to do at that moment, but just being there in the space. And it, I, I found it fascinating to see you doing this during the film, directing and acting. I mean, I, I know it's been said, but I mean, how? How is that possible? I'm still in love. <laughs> well, it was possible because of this woman right here, right? So, this is... <laughs> well, did, did you feel he was like a conductor? Well, I was going to say, I mean, I, 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 he was everything, and he was everything and everything on that set to all of us. And I was going to say, I have one of my memories from watching you in Philadelphia was watching you with the orchestra and the way they responded to you and the way you were with them. There was this unbelievably intimate relationship with all of these people. It was like you had a, like a little string to every single one of them. Um, and also just how much they loved you. And you could see that and how, I mean, because we all love you. But, but, but they, they, they see how much they loved you. And I think that's what... If that, if that was the first similarity to me between that and a film set, is if the director is someone that the crew want to work for and they love, that like they do an film, then they do. And it does feel like the two clarinets are playing, but everyone else is, is standing very by, you know, ready to do their part. And, and that comes from the top. You know what I wish I would have been on set for is the fight. 
in Thanksgiving. <laughs> I wish it had been on set for that. It's interesting you say that. Part of this, uh, I know I keep saying this experiment that we've all witnessed tonight, but that really what it was, and the movie to that degree was, in, talk, in thinking about it being one musical element, two of the instruments and all the other instruments that are vocal were the dialogue and the way that Josh and I wrote the dialogue based on the way that, you know, Lenny was so melodic with the way he spoke. And it was like watching, listening to music and Felicia. And that's why we had these, uh, you know, sonic elements tonight for you to listen to, um, hopefully which also found, you found rhythmic and melodic. And certainly that fight scene, which we wrote years ago, um, there was a melody to it. And even though I changed it on the day for what Lenny said, just because I could ride the melody of what, how you were playing it through your voice, um, that was one of the biggest thrills. And things that I learned from this film is just how you can play music just by two people talking. And that really is due to Carrie, especially in that scene, being able to play the music so pristinely. And, and the only reason that we're all here is because of the children, because of Alex, me, and James. <laughs> Symphony, 
and I decided this was amazing, and immediately was kind of my hero, and only as a conductor. That's the funny part. And I came later to the composing because I was vaguely aware, and I was side story, yes, but I think maybe this is because I was in Canada. It was not as, I don't know, he was first and foremost a conductor there. And then when I started working in the States, of course I knew, but there was this kind of proposal of, yes, would you conduct this piece and that piece of birth sign as a whole? And I conducted mass. As many things in my life, I do things, I start with the biggest thing ever. The first Mahler symphony I ever conducted at age 21 was Mahler 2. So then the first bird sign piece really I conducted was Mass, which is massive. No pun. Um, and was a shock. And Jenny was there, Nina was there, I remember Alexander was there too, I think. And it was a shock, and I felt, that was back in 2015, and I felt in Philadelphia, I must conduct all of his works. And then, that's why four years later, you came with this. I felt there was a mission in my life to uh, go more with his music, you know, his symphonies, his ballet music, his the, 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 the concertante works, all of this. And um, I still think that he's opened all the doors of who the, the musician of the 21st century should be, what it should be. An open mind, someone who's respectful and embracing so many genres and trying to uh, know more about this music coming from that country, from that background, no, uh, wanting to communicate music to the children, communicate music to everyone who hasn't been exposed to this music. And he was so groundbreaking in this, and was applauded for it, but was also criticized for it. Because people didn't know what mass it was. For example, why does mass have jazz and Hebrew and rock and choral? It's not right. That was the, the 1970s way of embracing it. But for sure enough, Erstein was this visionary, but today, this is what we do. We don't categorize things too much, we embrace everything. And that's why I think your film is so, uh, such a gift for people to understand how important and amazing it. I don't think the music world would be where it is at the moment if it were not from uh, maybe of, of him, of Lenny, opening all those doors. Said there were two goals we thought at the beginning always it changes, but one was like maybe people after seeing the film would re explore it truthfully to rethink what they even think about uh, a relationship is, and maybe that they have codified in a way that isn't totally truthful or maybe is biased. And the, the second thing is that they were spotted by the reverse side <laughs> after the movie and we stopped Mama. Uh, because you know, the truth is, having been doing this for quite a few years, this project, many people don't know who he is. If you go to a coffee shop in New York City, let alone any other state in America, people heard West Side Story but not Leonard Bernstein. That's why we were so excited about people being able to be exposed to songs. I mean, that, that, so how about the, the soloist? Oh, yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, one, 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 one day. Let's play. The, the third and the fourth of March will be doing Comden and Green. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's just been an incredible experience. This is a full circle. Uh, and for Carrie to be here tonight was, was not easy. And uh, we were talking about it. And I just said, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you. 